Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new super compact 65mm brushless FPV eraser. Uh, this is the UAV-ZUR65 uh, and is nothing else that more or less the same machine that I gave the last Sebido Kiha award, uh, the uh, AP model Sniper 6. So, we have more or less the same ingredient, the excellent a crazy BF3 brushless board, including a built-in fear sky receiver or fly sky. For the fear sky, it can work for both D16 or D8 mode, thanks to the new SPI connection, and it's exactly the same for the fly sky model, working in AFHDS 2A protocol. That's great. We have a super light machine. Imagine 27 gram including the battery it's just amazing for the motors we have the 0603 spinning at 17,000 kV the sniper 6 was 19,000 kV but this one is 3 gram more lighter so we will see if he will have uh, an advantage or more an handicap so what we have we have also a 700 AUFPV camera uh, in NTSC format, uh, CMOS sensor, 25 milliwatts, supporting 48 channel. And uh, the uh, main board is also integrating a 5 amper 4 in 1 uh, ESC, OK, Bell LES, uh, DSHOT CC100, of course, supported. So, uh, this machine comes with this box, and look that how similar it is compared to the uh, uh, Sniper 6. Look that, exactly the same time of box. Clearly, uh, we can guess that it's built in the same factory. So let's open and discover this new uh, great indoor FPV brushless racer. Okay, so let's open it. Ta -da -da. And what we have, we have the instruction manual. Oh, immediately I want to show you the comparison with the Sniper 6. And you will be really surprised by the box. Look that exactly the same time of instruction manual almost word by word okay so except here is written IP model but now he's written uh URU AV but exactly the same look that same type of instruction uh, manual and it's a good one uh, while English uh, written with full color photos where you can find all the ingredients okay for example you have uh, the full list of ingredients so we have with the standard edition 3LAV uh, battery, we have a charger, we have a screwdriver and so on. Uh, how to set uh, the V-band and the v freak okay. How to bind, uh, exactly the same as the sniper. And how to select either the D16 or the D8 mode through beta flight. Okay, so I will show you in few hands on but exactly the same paper in double side one, okay, where we have exactly the same photos. Look at that. No problem, exactly the same. So, uh, what we have also, I will show you the left and, and right. We have the machine, ta -da -da. we have the machine on the right. We have the same time of charger with the standard edition, exactly the same. So, we have for each six ports the possibility to charge either a 02 ampere or 06. And here we have a button also to select either LiPo or LEHV, so up to a 3.85 uh, volt per cell. Uh, you can power this uh, charger either uh, if you are in the field via an XT60 connector, for example, with a 3S LiPo or with a classic uh, DC port, okay, if you have a power unit. It's accepting up to uh, 25 volts, so no problem. And the comparison is not finished. Look the bag, exactly the same. Same uh, 31 mm three blade props, uh, really light and very efficient. Uh, same screwdriver, same remover prop remover tool, we have also a two rubber band, okay, and we will see, in fact, for the URU, is not uh, useful to use a rubber band. And the comparison is not over, we have two uh, 250 mAh powers uh, LEHV, and for the uh, uh, Sniper 6, exactly the same. So, ending with the uh, MCPX uh, the G, um, GST uh, 2 mm uh, of uh, pitch, okay, so, uh, for uh, example, I will give you immediately 
in terms of comparison, uh, for example, the, the weight of the LiPo. So it's a 250 uh, with a discharge rate between 30 to 60 C, probably more close to 30 C. And uh, this one weight standalone 6.4. And if you need some exact dimension, uh, they are quite standard. But if you need some, uh, they are about uh, 50 by uh, 12 by uh, 6. Okay, and ta -da -da, let's immediately give you the weight of this new. So with the battery, everything included, ta -da -da, we have 27.3 gram. Impressive. Let's compare with the Snapper 6 with our, or the same time of battery. We have 30.4 so we have close to a uh, 3.1 uh, gram more lighter for the uh, new model what are the difference mainly from the chassis bye bye the carbon element from the snapper we have here everything in nylon plastic base and it's much more flexible and a lighter and in fact i prefer why because for the snapper 6 we had some uh, aluminium prop guard so robust but as soon as you have a big crash they can they are bent and you will need to spend some time to uh, run mo model the uh, circular shape so you take a couple of time and uh, well and the structure the carbon structure even it's super solid uh, is probably useless for such uh, ultra light weight so three gram saved it's a lot about 10 percent of weight saved it's a lot on the other hand the motors are only 17,000 kV where we have 19,000 kV and uh, probably uh, the best option will be to transfer this type of motor into the URE chassis you have to know that um, we have now some Deus 3 uh, 0603 uh, motor and on to speed at 22,000 kV from Russell Star uh, their uh, BRB version. So mm -hmm, I think with such type of motor uh, uh, in one has each motor can pull up to 26 grams for each motor. So we can have something a ratio close to four to one should be impressive with the 7000 kV I think the maximum pull thrust will be about um, less than 20 grams okay something about 18 19 grams so we have maybe close to a 3 uh, 1 uh, ratio so what we have exactly the same canopy looks at exactly the same okay the same hole and the same system where you can adjust thanks to these two lateral screws the uh, up tilt position of the IO camera so it can be bent up to uh, 20 uh, degrees and if you need even more uh, angle because you are flying aggressively outdoors you can just uh, screw this one on the rear side a little bit more uh, uh, deeper and uh, you will enjoy a more advanced up tilt angle um, one of uh, things the top canopy is installed on some uh, o-rings from o-rings so it will absorb some vibration the motors are installed directly on the heart and look on the arm they are full plastic base they look super tiny look that only is for super thin so if you want an idea but um, they are something about less than three millimeters and they are also attached through the Duke system here through the main central one. Okay, so uh, what we have is a crazy B board. We have the micro USB port located on the uh, rear part. It's not super easy to access. At least you have to remove the battery and more. If you want to uh, leave all in beta flight, it would be a little bit uh, more uh, problematic and probably to level this machine, you will more uh, apply uh, the uh, stick command, okay, when uh, it's an arm. So we have the uh, GST uh, PH20 uh, on the rear side. The gauge is correct. Maybe uh, losing a little bit some amount of current possibly uh, available with the uh, 30C battery. The 2.4 gigahertz uh, antenna is installed on top, on front. You have to install it more bottom. It's based on the silicon wires as insulator. So each motor of the uh, sniper are attached via some uh, three uh, position 1.25 uh, GST connector. 
Really, I like the design and the only drawback are the access to, first of all, the less problematic is to the video transmitter button. You have to use a screwdriver, relatively long, and access here, okay, to the button. Why they then, for example, open here this part to uh, make a more direct access to the video transmitter button. I think it's maybe a first a mode to apply, uh, use a screwdriver, okay, and, and use a very thin tip to drill a hole here. The more problematic is for the bind button. Where is it? It's located, look that, I have to open a bit to bend it a bit. It's located here. Where you can see the screw, you go down and you are just behind a super tiny, super tiny bind button here. And believe me, it's super hard to access why you need to, for example, plug the uh, battery uh, to uh, enter into the binding mode. It's really, for me, the most annoying point of this type of uh, crazy B, uh, flight controller, the su super tiny side of the bind button. So it's a little bit tricky. One more word. Um, I advise also to bind it more in D8 mode. First of all, to enjoy in 11 millisecond uh, latency instead of 22. Uh, because we are saving a channel and um, secondly um, uh, there are some people who observe that with the crazy bee they can have some uh, sticks glitches uh, observed in the d16 mode so don't worry in both d8 or d16 mode the telemetry sent to the radio is here and more we have osd uh, rssi on the osd that's great so really an excellent 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 board. Uh, just one word with the Snapper 6. Sometimes I observe that uh, one motor won't not starting and uh, usually you have to play a little bit with the connector some stuff like this to bend a little bit the wires to let the motor uh, spinning one more time so it can happen so if it happens do the same with the URU 65, play with the connector a bit or reboot uh, several times the board until the motors, the non-working motor will uh, be up again. So um, there is no bother and the trick is usually to increase the uh, beacon strength of uh, okay in a BLLE configurator or BLLE suit. It's what I will do first of all before even to edit some uh, BLLE uh, configurator okay uh, uh, um, to beta flight sorry to change and to um, uh, show you the default settings. What I can show you is of uh, the default uh, OSD settings. So I will power up the machine the ESC are very low okay, in terms of bathing and you will see that the FPV monitors by default is displaying a lot of information for example we have the horizon line the RSSI is on top, the battery, the uh, remaining uh, time from the boot or in the flight, the statue, the statue, another statue of the battery, the current matters, that's great, the name of the craft, the throttle input and the type of flight mode. So probably a lot of OS information can be removed because not necessary and polluting the uh, uh, FPV racing. Okay, so uh, it's an NTSC model. The uh, 700 TBL model offer a pretty good sharp image. I really was positively uh, surprised by this one and it's a good AEOF PV model. So really a, a good one. No specific light, okay, except some white uh, uh, tr with transparency uh, will uh, be enlightening the front and the same on the rear, more red. Okay, so for some night flight, you will have some colors. Um, so the first thing to do before to go to beta flight is um, to uh, increase the beacon constraints to a value around uh, 200, some stuff like this. Uh, and after, thanks to a beta flight command, we will be able to assign a switch uh, to this beacon constraints and to use it as the brother uh, for uh, your lost machine. Okay, so first of all, I'm really impressed by this new frame saving up to three gray. Two gram and why having exactly the same possibilities and the Snapper 6, remember, received my last CB Doki award. So this one, probably the new king we will see in the flight, how our punchy are there, are there. And now let's go to a barely configurator. So I will attempt to connect to a barely configurator. Sometimes it's capricious. Okay, when you obtain this uh, 
panel, you have then uh, to uh, need to connect the battery. Okay, and then press read setup. And I already did some change, but I will show you it's very important to increase the beep strength to something about 200 and to decrease to, uh, for example, uh, one minute. Okay, some stuff like this uh, in case you want to uh, use the uh, ESC motors as a butter, then write setup is very important. I also activate the break and stop option. So I will write setup to write all the settings. Okay. And then we are ready to go in uh, for beta flight uh, configuration. Okay, so let's connect to beta flight. And uh, since I already bound the machine in uh, GSKI G8 mode, I already uh, made a small change. So, but whatever, let's have a look to the default settings and let's try to optimize on flies uh, some important one. So in terms of port, uh, we have the USB VCP, so never touch it and no serial activated uh, is normal because the uh, receiver is connected via SPI, no more serial link and it will be even more faster. So don't worry if you don't serve, observe, for example, some um, RSSI activity in the uh, uh, channel port as usual when for a NESBUS uh, uh, receiver. So in terms of configuration, let's check that. We have a quad X in normal sense. If you observe, for example, that you are losing altitude after a fast U-turn on the right, the trick is in general to inverse the sense of rotation and then uh, in manually configure your change the sense of the, each uh, rotation. So for example, the four wheel spin like this, the second like this. And of course you have also to swap the props, for example, the left with the right and the uh, rear uh, left with the rear right, for example. But whatever, I will keep the default one. Uh, D-Shot 600 is selected by default, that's great. And we have the frequency uh, for the main PAD loop, two kilos and eight kilos for the zeros. I don't advise to touch this value actually. Uh, no specific board alignment, okay, and very important, as I said previously, uh, by default you are in D16 mode, so it means that it's VSKI X, okay, and I selected the D for uh, to bind the machine in D8 mode to have a lower latency. Very important to be sure that telemetry and OSD are turned on as features, but the rest is, uh, uh, okay, as the, the, the normal uh, importance. So you can see that the beacon here is uh, by default uh, set to one. So it means that you, for example, you can use the uh, beacon D shot to uh, make a butter, or in any case, you can enter this command. Okay, uh, set beeper D shot beacon turn equal to one. Save it, and it's uh, in fact equivalent to uh, this exactly the same command in uh, barely configuration I show you previously. So this one to be more precise in uh, configuration. This one, okay. So is this beacon tonality to one? So one is assigned to one, you will be able to assign uh, the uh, beacon and uh, as butter and playing with the, uh, the switch, that's great. So in terms of battery, uh, you know that this crazy B are uh, uh, for example, show very fast some uh, battery low alarm. So I strongly advise to decrease a little bit these values, okay, to something uh, more like this, okay, uh, and uh, it will be more uh, readable. So uh, I will save. Sorry, save, and let's continue in terms of PIDs. They are the default one, and I will change for or at least for the rate for my favorite one. So since it's a tiny whoop, it's known that uh, the uh, settings, and uh, especially the yo uh, and the rates in pitch and roll are, are slower, especially if you want to uh, perform some aqua flight, is strongly advised to increase these two values. And for the ya yeah answer, I prefer more linear one, so I will apply more values about this one. Okay, I will save that. And uh, we can check the default uh, settings. So the filter is a big one, and we have nothing specifically adapted for the machine. Okay, uh, for the receiver. So I will turn on the radio, and as you can see, uh, okay, I've got the element. 
So uh, first of all, uh, for my jumper radio, uh, I will assign change the default uh, channel mapping, uh, starting with aileron, okay, and then it will be more easy. Be sure that uh, all the values are between 1,000 and uh, 1, 2,000, for example. So this one, for example, are more or less okay. And uh, here we can observe the uh, all the uh, two three-way arcs I have. Okay, and you do not see, for example, the AUX4 uh, uh, displaying any OSD information, uh, RSSI, for example. So since it's connected via SPI, it's useless now to, uh, to uh, uh, configure this stuff. But whatever, um, I will uh, apply some element, also some dead band. It's very important sometimes to have more precise flight. Okay, I will register, save. Okay, and be sure to have everything, all your channel center to uh, 1500. For the flight mode, let's check that we have an arming, okay, for AUX1 here, that's okay. And uh, what I will do, um, I will arm on the last position here, for example, but in the middle, okay, I will use the buzzer, okay. So um, if I can see it, beeper here, and I will apply the AUX1 and use this uh, this uh, uh, value, so when I am in the middle, okay, I should activate the beeper, and thanks to the command, uh, it should emit a buzzer, a buzzer as soon as the battery is connected, okay? So actually it's not ringing because my battery is not yet. I will uh, play with the different uh, um, flight mode on the second three-way switch, so angle, then I will play something more with horizon, and then uh, anti-gravity and air mode, for the acro one like this so i will select more for the uh, axe two axe two okay and uh, uh where is the air mode here okay and the last and i will for the axe two so uh, for the flight mode we are ready to go okay and let's check that is working well Yes, horizon, angle, horizon, and uh, anti-gravity. For the OSD, we have a lot of information displayed. So first of all, we will characterize that it's an MTSC machine. And also we have uh, something super small, okay, uh, and uh, voila. Um, and uh, we will uh, only display the timer too, which is the total time when it's harm. Uh, we will uh, remove the artificial origin, okay? Um, keep the crosshair, keep the main battery voltage, keep the uh, RSSI, uh, remove the craft name, and uh, and we keep the other information. And I will also uh, remove the uh, uh, warning here, okay? And when it's uh, uh, disarm, okay? Only when it's harm, we can keep it like this. So let's check that the flight mode. No, I will disarm it. I will remove it. Okay, and make appearing more of the uh, flight mode here. And we can also uh, optimize a little bit the layout, some stuff like this. Okay, and we are ready to go. Maybe decrease a bit the position of this one. And we are we are great. I want to play also with the. Uh, uh, with the fonts, so I will use a clarity one, which is uh, a bigger, larger fonts, and I will load it into the board. Take a couple of seconds, and after uh, in your athletic goggles as well, it will be much, much more easier to read all the information in my point of view. Okay, we are ready. We need to boot. Okay, but and we'll let's check one more time. Um, when we we'll connect one more time, the uh, new size of the font of the USD is not necessary here. It still kept the uh, original one, but don't worry on your FPV uh, feedback. The new uh, font will be here. So uh, we did a full tour and we configure everything. Okay, maybe a little bit optimize here. But so everything is here, and we can go now in the field to uh, test the new uh, uh, 
UR65 and we'll compare with the uh, Snapper 6 and we'll see if this 3 grams saved versus a little bit slower motor will be uh, more or less equivalent to the uh, power of the Snapper 6. Let's go! Welcome to the demo flight of the UR65. Well, we're testing now with those conditions. It's a little bit windy in my garden in my backwards so uh but we will see at least at least uh, the wind resistance so it's three gram more lighter than the sniper six okay and from the first test i found that the motor uh, works pretty well so it should be a very uh, a good sign let's test that now in loss condition let's go okay so i'm recording in my results and let's on the machine Yes, yes, pretty good punch. It's great. So compared to the Snapper 6, is pretty good. Yes, it's it's fast. Yeah, working pretty well. Really like. It can recover from very easily from from a losing altitude. Let's see another punch out. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Pretty good for 1S. Imagine this machine with 22,000 kV motors. Yeah. Mm. And it's fast and despite to be in wind condition. So no problem for our dose application. Yes, it's a uh, Yes, super strong uh, 1S. As you can see, yes, pretty efficient. So now it's time to go into FPV.
conclusion about this UR, UAV UR65 and really I like this machine I like a lot of this Sniper 6 and I think I even prefer this one uh, it's as punchy as the uh, Sniper 6 thanks to this 3 gram uh, saved it's punchy, absolutely acro compatible, crash resistant as you saw I crash many times, don't, I don't see a lot of stress on the air structure on the Duke system as well uh, the flight time is about 3 minutes, sometimes 3 minutes 30, okay, maximum, but don't abuse of the LEHV because they are known to have a shorter uh, life, uh, the number of cycle, uh, charging cycle is limited, so a really recommended machine, I like the um, or the Fierce Sky receiver uh, working while well, you enjoy telemetry and you can read the uh, current uh, information thanks to the crazy BF3 board. It's more or less well, uh, uh, I would say, configure out of the box except the OSD where too much information are displayed in my point of view. The only drawback uh, of this machine in my point of view is this super tiny button of this uh, crazy B. It's very small and it's sometimes a little bit tricky to keep press this button holding pressed and uh, enter the battery into um, beginning uh, to begin the um, uh, binding procedure except that the range is great the uh, um, camera IO for the SMOS one is not bad at all 700 TVL the range FPV and the controller are good so definitely a super great flyers and it can even handle uh, some moderate wind as you saw in the first part uh, I would see I would see uh, I would say something about 20 30 kilometers is still acceptable for this machine outdoors so um, really a great indoors and outdoors flyers with moderate winds so um, I will also discern this to this machine uh, another award I really like it I recommend it and uh, really it would be my best favorite uh, indoors uh, trainer and in the first uh, mode, I will probably upgrade the motors to the year uh, uh, 22,000 kV version to enjoy even more uh, uh, boost. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this new review. If you like it, please submit and see you next time. Bye bye.